How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game finds us back in time, and this is January 2020. We've got the Jersey Boys, with Trevor playing Vile Smasher and Ikra. He keeps Demonic Tutor, Swamp, Kadama's Reach, Bloodstained Mire, Electrodominance, Soul Ring, and Decree of Pain. Orion is playing Bladewing, keeping a Dragon Skull Summit, Rakdos Carnarium, Swamp, Graven Cairn, Territorial Hellkite, and Goyro's Vengeance. Harry is playing Niv Mizzet, keeping a Gateway Plaza, Spring, Pernicious Deed, Ethereum Horn Sorcerer, Frontier Bivouac, Discovery, and Domri, Anarch of Bolas. Mike is playing his Ever deck, keeping a Plains, Inventor's Fair, Whisper Silk Cloak, Sure Strike Trident, and an Endless Atlas. Harry wins the die roll and starts us off. Harry plays a tap Frontier Bivouac. Mike plays a Plains. Trevor plays a Swamp and casts Soul Ring. Ryan plays a Swamp as well. Harry plays a Gateway Plaza, tapping one as it comes in for the Enter the Battlefield cost. Mike plays an Inventor's Fair and pays two for Endless Atlas. Trevor plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a shock line with green, and he casts Kadama's Reach. He saves some time going to search for the lands all at once as he passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a tapped Rakdos Carnarium, which bounces his swamp back to hand, and he then passes turn. Harry plays a Hollowed Fountain, taking two so it comes in untapped, and pays three mana for Domri and Archibolus. He upticks the walker to make a mana that he doesn't use, and just passes to Mike. Mike plays an Oreskos Explorer, who upon entering, sees two opponents who controls more land than he does. He goes to grab two planes and puts them to hand. He'll play one, but he passes in the meantime. Trevor drops a forest return, and then taps out for Ikra before passing Orion. Ryan plays his swamp again, and casts a Dragon's Horde, passing a Harry. Harry plays another Shockland, and takes two so the Sacred Foundry comes in untapped. He then upticks Domri to make a green or a red, and is able to cast niv Mizzet Reborn. With the Dragon entering, Harry reveals his top ten cards. He hits a decent amount of gold cards, but sadly most of them are from the same pairings. He keeps a Maelstrom Pulse, Counterflux, and Reap the Past. Mike's turn has him drawing and playing a Plains. He casts his own Soul Ring and passes to Trevor. Trevor plays another Forest and casts Demonic Tutor, but hits Mike first with Ikra. This has Trevor gaining 7 life from Ikra's on damage trigger, and he passes while searching. Ryan plays a Dragon Skull Summit and taps enough for a Territorial Hellkite. He gets a counter onto his Dragon Horde and moves to combat. He rolls to see who will randomly get attacked by the Hellkite, and the die tells him to hit Mike. Ryan does so, and then passes to Harry. Harry shocks himself again as he plays an Overgrown Tomb, and he then casts a Maelstrom Pulse. He targets Mike's Soul Ring, which, in response, has Mike activating his Atlas to draw a card. Trevor also responds by casting Electra Dominance, where X is 3. He deals 3 damage to Harry, and then casts from his hand a Vandal Blast to blow up Mike's Soul Ring. This has the Pulse have no legal target, and it fizzles, saving Trevor's own Soul Ring from destruction. Once all that's then resolved, Harry casts Spring and goes to find a basic from his library to put onto the field. He then goes to combat, hitting Trevor with Niv for 7, since Domri pumps him by plus 1 plus 0. Mike plays a Plains and casts a tapped Cold Steel Heart, naming White as it comes in. He then passes turn. Trevor plays and cracks a Wooded Foothills, losing 1. He goes at Harry with Ikra, dealing 3 commander damage and gaining 7 life. In his second main phase, he'll have enough after he's found a land to cast Decree of Pain. 
Ryan responds to this using his horde to draw a card, and the board is then wiped, with Trevor going to draw four cards after he's done tutoring for a land. Ryan plays a mountain for turn, and he casts a Rakdos Signet. He is enough then for a Thunderbreak Regent, and he gets to put a counter onto his Dragon Horde as it comes in, and he passes to Harry. Harry's turn has him upticking Domri to make mana, and pays 7 for Cloven Casting. He then passes to Mike, who at the end of turn, uses his Atlas to draw a card. Mike plays a Plains for turn, and taps 6 for Sun Titan. It enters, and brings back his Soul Ring, and he passes to Trevor. Trevor's turn is quite quick, as he casts a Sylvan Library, and then a Scavenging Ooze. He then taps three more for a Vile Smasher, passing to Ryan. Ryan plays Graven Cairns as his land for turn, and then taps enough mana to cast his commander, Bladewing the Risen. He targets the Territorial Hellkite in his graveyard as it comes in, but Trevor exiles it and gains one with the Scavenging Ooze. Ryan does get a counter on his Dragon Horde though. Moving to combat, the Thunderbreak hits Trevor for four, and Ryan passes. Harry draws and upticks Domri. He casts Dragonlord Atarka, who as she enters, deals three to Vile Smasher and two to the Scavenging Ooze. It doesn't kill the Ooze sadly, and Harry passes. At the end of turn, Mike once more draws with his Atlas. Mike gains one life on his upkeep from Inventor's Fair seen enough artifacts, and then draws for turn. He plays a Plains, and then casts a Whisper Silk Cloak, which seems like a sweet piece of gear to put onto his commander. He equips the Sun Titan with it, and goes at Ryan with the now unblockable Giant. This lets him bring back his Oreskos Explorer, but sadly, he can't find any lands as it enters. Ryan then takes the hit, and in Mike's second main phase, we see Crush Contraband exiling Trevor's Sylvan Library and Ryan's Dragon Horde. Trevor draws, and plays a Slender Glade Expedition. He casts Disrupt Decorum, which will force his opponents to attack during their combat steps, just not him. Eternal Witness then comes into play, and brings back Demonic Tutor, and Trevor passes. Ryan plays a mountain for turn, and has to go to attack. He swings both of his dragons at Mike, and moves to a second main phase after they connect. He casts his copy of Decree of Pain, and before it resolves, Trevor exiles a creature from Harry's yard with the ooze, gaining one life. The board is then wiped again, and Ryan draws a nice chunk of cards. He then passes, picking what he'll discard. Harry's main phase has him tapping the very color-intensive Golgari Find Broker, who enters, and returns a permanent to his hand. He plays the Seaside Citadel for turn, which comes in tapped, and then casts Discovery, paying the one extra from Cloven Casting to copy it. Harry then gets to Surveil 2 and draw a card, and keeps both on top, and then does it again. Mike gains one from his fair, and in his main phase, casts Evra. Once his commander is done resolving, he gives it the Whisper Silk Cloak for protection, and passes. Trevor draws, and is very concerned by Evra just one-shotting people. He casts Demonic Tutor to go and find an answer, because he knows Mike is going to gun for him. We see a Bane of Progress then hitting the stack, which Trevor had presumably just found, and as it enters, it blows up a lot of artifacts. He gets to put that many plus one plus one counters onto it, and Trevor then passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a Swamp for turn, and casts Mana Geyser. He gets 18 red mana as it resolves, and then makes some black mana by filtering it through his Graven Cairns to cast Ever After. This lets him bring back Bladewing and a Deathbringer Regent. And with Bladewing entering, he gets to bring back the Thunderbreak Regent. He then bottoms Ever After. Ryan still has more red mana to spend, putting out a Skyline Despot and becoming the Monarch. We then see a sneak attack in the field, and he then pays one red to cast a Flame Slash on Evra. Mike responds with the spell in the stack once he gains priority, casting Shelter to give Evra protection from red. This saves it, and draws Mike a card. Ryan then passes, drawing at the end of turn from Monarch. Harry keeps upticking Domri, and uses the mana to help cast Nature's Lore. He finds a Taft Murmuring Bosk, and then casts Cultivate. He finds a basic for the field, and one for his hand. He plays the forest he found as his land for turn, and passes to Mike. 
Mike draws and plays a planes. We see Trailblazer's boots hitting the field and gets equipped onto Evra. He goes at Ryan because he wants the Monarch. Mike doesn't want to take him out though and simply deals 4 and gains 4 life. In his second main phase, he drops a Silent Arbiter and passes, drawing since he's now become the Monarch with Evra connecting. Trevor plays a tap Savage Lance return and goes to combat. He swings a Bane at Mike, who doesn't want to lose the Arbiter. He takes the hit and Trevor becomes the Monarch. Trevor then passes and draws at the end of turn. Ryan draws and plays a Mountain. He uses Sneak Attack to cheat out a Horde Smelter Dragon and then activates that once it's on the field to blow up the Arbiter. He then blows up Mike's boots and Ryan goes to combat. He swings the Thunder Break and Smelter at Trevor and the Despot and Bladewing at Mike. Before moving to damage though, Trevor casts Terminate on the Regent and copies it with a Reiterate. Mike asks if they're friends, and Trevor says yes, but he can't help him, and Mike then takes the hit, and Ryan passes. Harry untaps and upticks Domri, and taps enough mana for Reap the Past where X is enough to bring back his entire graveyard to hand. He then exiles the sorcery. Harry then plays at a mountain for turn, and casts Nature's Lore to go and find another forest. He moves to discard, pitching down to 7. Mike untaps and draws. He casts a Sure Strike Trident, which seems like super spicy tech for Evra. He then plays out Oath of Liege, and then a Howling Mine, trying to buy some goodwill with the table. He then passes to Trevor. Trevor gets to find a basic thanks to Mike's Oath, and then draws an extra card from the Howling Mine. He casts Seasons Past, and returns to hand a Bloodstained Mire, Soul Ring, Demonic Tutor, Eternal Witness, Disrupt Decorum, and Decree of Pain to Hand, and he then puts the Season on the bottom of his library. He plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn, and then cracks it and loses one to find a Smoldering Marsh Expedition. Trevor then recasts his Soul Ring, and swings the Bane at Ryan, but Ryan blocks it with the Deathbringer Regent. In Trevor's second main phase, he casts Farseek, and discards down to 7 before going to find his land. Ryan draws his 2 on his turn, and in his main phase, casts an Ancient Cravings, losing 3 life and drawing 3 more. He plays a Haven of the Spirit Dragon as his land for turn, and then uses Sneak Attack. This lets him put out Dragonlord Coligan, and he taps another red to put out Varix Bladewing. Moving to combat, Varix goes at Trevor, while Coligan goes at Mike and the two remaining dragons go at Domri. Before moving to damage, Ryan activates Blade Ring to pump all of his dragons by plus one plus one. Trevor casts Curtain's Fall, and takes out the dragons heading at him and Mike. Domri then takes the hit though, and with the dragons dying, Ryan gets a Boneyard Scourge trigger. He pays the two and puts the dragon to the field from his graveyard, and Domri gets taken out, and Ryan passes. Harry draws, and taps enough to recast Niv. He reveals his top 10 cards, and he gets 5 to hand from the trigger, which seems really solid. Harry then casts an unexpected results, shuffling his library and revealing off the top. We see a Tygum Ojitai Master off the top, and he puts it into play. Harry then casts a Cavern Harpy, and bounces his commander back to hand. Moving to his end step, Harry then has to discard down to 7. Mike grabs his planes from the Oath trigger, and shuffles up and draws his 2. He plays a Plains for turn, and gives Ever the Trident. Mike then swaps Ever's power and toughness for his life total, and taps Ever to throw the Trident at Ryan. Mike gains his life total worth of life back from this, and then passes to Trevor. Trevor untaps and gets to find a land from the Oath Trigger, because Harry has so many lands. He then draws two, and plays a Reliquary Tower as his land for turn. He pays two mana for Demonic Tutor, and goes to grab a card. He casts Mana Geyser, gaining 29 red mana. He taps 4 lands, and then puts to stack an Exsanguinate, where X is 31. If that wasn't enough though, he copies it twice with Fury Storm, and the table know when they're done, scooping it up to him. Game review time. So I don't think anyone actually did anything wrong in this game, 
Some might say that Mike should have attacked Trevor with Evra and tried to take him out, but as we saw, Trevor had tons of removal in his hand, and that wouldn't have worked out. I think going for Monarch was perfectly fine, since Mike wanted to draw into more cards, since it seemed like he was getting a lot of lands. This game actually was pretty sweet, since everyone cast each commander, and most of them did something, except for Vile Smasher for once. Trevor even was able to win with just a really large Exsanguinate and Fury Storm, which was cool to see. I think the card I was most impressed with from Harry was Domri. Not only does his uptick give you mana, it also makes it a real headache to deal with creatures since you can't counter them, and Harry got a ton of value out of him. I also thought Ryan's play of Ever After to get back Bladewing to in turn return another dragon was pretty sweet, bringing back three creatures for the price of two. It was also great to see Dragon Horde act as both a mana rock and a card engine in his deck, and I've always enjoyed Ryan's Bladewing deck. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.